Okay, hello, welcome. My March of the Machines just came out, and I've got some packs to open. So since I am out in the real world right now and not at home at my computer, I've got to do this uh, through mobile. So let's start with the March of the Machines packs. Let's get right into it. I have actually not seen many of these cards that we're getting today. It's like I've, I've taken a look at like a few of the spoilers, but aside from that, I don't think I've seen maybe half the cards on that we're that we're seeing. Zalfirin Lancer, three three for three. Whenever another knight enters the battlefield under your control, Zalfirin Lancer gets plus one plus one against vigilance on a turn. That's interesting. It's not bad for uh, for only uh, three mana. But pretty pretty restrictive though. Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. What is up with this uh, this card bracket? Look at this card frame. It looks really weird. So for 5 mana, you get a 3-1 with Cascade. Wow, I haven't seen that keyword in a long time. Uh, spells you cast with mana value 6 or greater have Cascade. Wow. Interesting. I can see someone trying to build like a, um, a commander deck out of that. My touch Not bad for the first... Uh, First card, uh, first uh, rare slot in the first pack. Ren and Realm Breaker. Three mana, four loyalty, lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color. That right there's a reason to play, play this card, Jesus. Plus one, up to one target land you control becomes a 3-3 three, three elemental creature with a Vigilance, Hexproof, and Haste until your next turn. It's still a land. That's pretty good. Vigilance, Hexproof, and Haste. Not indestructible, though. Minus two, mill three cards. You may put a permanent card from among the milled cards into your hand. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's pretty decent. And minus seven, you get an emblem with you may play lands and cast permanent spells from your graveyard. Oh, I could see that being really nice. Uh, yeah. I like that, not bad. All right, next up. Here he's Warcrafting. Oh, so this is this is a rare. So here's Warcrafting. Three. And here's Warcrafting deals five damage to target creature, planeswalker, or battle. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the excess damage dealt this way. You may exile one of those cards, but the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. You may play the exiled card this turn. Okay, so it deals damage and then you get to impulse draw for the uh, excess damage. That's pretty cool. Uh, and here's our first invasion. Invasion of Ragatha. When Invasion of Ragatha enters the battlefield, it deals 4 damage to another target battle or opponent and 1 damage to up to 1 target creature. That's kind of cool. You can use this to bust up other, uh, other battles. Disciples of the Inferno. Prowess. If a non-creature source you control would deal damage to a creature, battle, or opponent, it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. It becomes a gutter snipe. It becomes a 4-4 four, four Prowess Gutter Snipe. Not bad. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh my. Look at you. Shaildred, the Whispering One. Okay, I, I get it now. That's why the, the rare was in the pack as well. Because this is this is not a standard card. This is like um, an old reprint. But with a very nice cosmetic. Seven mana, Swamp Block. Beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. Pretty cool. So we're only going to open like the first like ten packs, and then we're just going to bulk open. And then I'll just take a look at my uh, my collection afterwards, because otherwise we're going to be here all day. Merciless Repurposing. Six mana, Exile Target Creature, Incubate three. Incubate makes these tokens that can transform into uh, into creatures. Yeah, Incubate 3. Let's see. Create an Incubator token with 3 plus and plus 1 counters on it, and 2, transform this artifact. It transforms into a 0, zero Phyrexian with those plus and plus 1 counters on it. Okay. So, exile creature, make a 3-3. Three, three. Could be useful for, uh, for draft. Tetsuko Umezawa Fugitive. 1, 3 for 2. Creatures you control with power power or toughness 1 or less can't be blocked. I like that. I like the uh, the artwork too. That's nice. 
Oh, that's that's an older card, right? Yeah. I got you gotta pay attention to these uh these set symbols. And here we have Invasion of Karsis. Four mana, another red invasion. When Invasion of Karsis enters the battlefield, it deals three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Okay, that's pretty decent. So it's a little bit more expensive, um uh what's the card? Um the, the Brothers War card that deals three to everything. Uh, and then becomes a 4-4 Ward Pay 2 Life. Whenever you cast a spell, Refraction Elemental deals 2 damage to each opponent. Okay. <laughs> Damn. I like that. That's really good. Alright, next pack. Okay. Here we have Zada Hedron Grinder. That's an old card. Skyclave Aerialist. Here we go. Okay, so, so we have a Merfolk. Nice. So it's uh, for two mana, you get a 2-1 with flying, and it has a activated ability of 4 and a Phyrexian blue. Transform Skyclave Aerialist. Activate as a sorcery. So unfortunately, you can't do this at end of turn. And it transforms into a 2-4 uh, oh, Skyclave Invader. It becomes a 2-4 flying Phyrexian Merfolk Scout. When this creature transforms into Skyclave Invader, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't, put the card onto the battlefield. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. Interesting. It's not bad. It's not bad. Guardian of Yeriper. 3-3 three, three Angel for 3. Badass art. I love it. Flying when Guardian of Garapur enters the battlefield, exile up to one other target creature or artifact you control. Return it to the battlefield under its own. Oh, it blinks something. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, if this had had flash, that would be even better. But then it would probably cost like four or five mana, and be an uncommon. Okay, next pack. Okay, we have Progenitor Exarch. Phyrexian Cat Cleric XX White for a 1 2. When Exarch enters the battlefield, incubate 3x times. Transform or, or and tap transform target incubator token you control. Okay, that's interesting. So you, you dump a bunch of mana and you incubate 3x times. So you, you create X incubator tokens with um, 3 plus and plus 1 counters on them. Okay, that's very interesting. That could be something you'd want to use with um, something like, um, God, it was the it was the card from from the previous set. It was an artifact, four mana, um, flash, and it comes with oil counters. And like uh, every turn, you add an oil counter on it, and it reduces the mana cost of spells by the amount of oil counters on it. Um, Mind Splice apparatus. That's it. Yeah, that could be a good pair up with that. Let's see, over here we have Norn's Inquisitor. That's pretty cool looking. For two, you get a 1-1 Phyrexian Knight. When Norn's Inquisitor enters the battlefield, incubate two. Whenever a permanent you control transforms into a Phyrexian, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Interesting. So we got like a little uh, support for the incubator uh, style. And here we have Yorian, Sky Nomad. Oh uh, yeah, that old card. But we're, we're skipping over talking about the um, the non-standard card, because standard is pretty much the only format I play. Okay, here we go. Yargle and Mutani. 18-6. <laughs> For 3, 2 black, and a green. And it's just flavor text. It's hilarious. It's hilarious is what it is. I could see someone like throwing that into like, like a fling-style deck. Just pop it in, just fucking throw it at someone. That'd be great. And here we have Saison, Perverter of Truth. That's some great art. Look at that. Alright. Next pack. Here we have Renata, Called to the Hunt. Okay, so that's an older card. We have Invasion of Kaladesh. Okay, here's something interesting. So this is Is It? It's a blue and a red. When Invasion of Kaladesh enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. Okay. And then it transforms, after you, you beat the invasion, into Aetherwing Golden Scale Flagship. 
That's beautiful art, too. Uh, flight, it's a star four toughness, and it's an artifact uh, vehicle. Flying, ether wing, golden scales, flagships, powers equal to the number of artifacts you control. Okay, so I, I so you you want definitely want to play this in like a Nahiri deck. As as a crew of one, so you, you can crew this with the Ornithopter. That's pretty cool, and you can just blow up the in, the invasion with burn spells probably. Oh, another invasion, invasion of Fiora. We're hearing a, a lot of like uh, realm names that I've never heard before. Like I don't know where Fiora is. Okay, Invasion of Fiora is four colorless and two black. Invasion, Battle Siege. When Fiora enters the battlefield, choose one or both. Destroy all legendary creatures or destroy all non-legendary creatures. Interesting. Okay, so it, it could be a sweeper. Or like a semi-sweeper. You could play this in your own legendary deck and just blow up uh, uh, non-legendaries. Uh, Menace Death Touch, when Marchisa Resolute Monarch attacks, remove all counters from up to one target permanent. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you haven't been dealt damage since your last turn, you draw a card and you lose one life. Well, that's interesting. Very interesting. Alright, next pack. Okay, here we have Ayara, Widow of the Realm. That's pretty cool looking. It's a 3-3 three, three Elf Noble for 3 mana. Sacrifice Tap, sacrifice another creature or artifact. Ayara, Wit, Widow of the Realm, deals X damage to target opponent or battle, and you gain X life, where X is the sacrifice permanence mana value. Okay, well there you go. Oh no, no, it's, it's mana value, it's, it's not power or toughness. I was thinking to, to pair that with, uh, with that big 18-6 creature. Uh, 5 and a Phyrexian Red, transform Ayara. Activate only as a sorcery. She becomes the Furnace Queen. 4-4, four, four, at the beginning of combat on your turn, return up to one target artifact or creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So you just do that at the beginning of your your combat on each of your turns. So like whenever it's, it's time to, to just start attacking, you just start bringing stuff back. That could be fantastic with not just like a like an an aggressive style of deck, but like like a reanimator deck would want want this as well. That's very cool. Okay, over here we have the Remosian Great Sword. And it's a four and a red convoke. Equipped creature gets plus three plus one and trample with equip cost of two. I can't see any time I would want to be like tapping two, three, or four creatures just to cast an, an equipment. It seems like a waste of a turn. Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. Man, man, that is some good art. I like that. Very nice. I do really like the 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 Inky Praetor art. Okay, here we have the Dusk Legion Duelist. It's a vampire soldier in white. How interesting. Uh, one in white for 2-2 two, two Vigilance. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Dusk Legion Duelist, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. Interesting. So you're going to have to find ways to put plus one plus one counters on this card. But if you do that, you can just start drawing cards. So like you can do that with cards like um, uh, the Emperor. Or you can use it with... Uh... Oh, shoot. You can use this with a Kamana Faces Kakazan. And that's on curve. Yo, that's pretty good. I, I might have to have to mess around with that. Invasion of Muraganda. Invasion of Muraganda enters the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Then that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay, cool. So it's a fight card. And Primordial Plasm is what it turns into. So for a 4-4, four, four, at the beginning of combat on your turn... Another target creature gets plus two, plus two, and loses all abilities until end of turn. Interesting. Very interesting. Here we have Anafenza, the Kin Tree Spirit. Beautiful. I like it. Alright, last of the single packs. Here we have Invasion of Ixalan. I think this is the uh, the dinosaur realm, right? I didn't play during this time. Um, when Invasion of Ixalan enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into your hand. 
Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. So you just look at the top five cards and put, and put a put like a creature or something in your hand. And it becomes a 4-3 trample whenever you cast a spell. Belligerent Regisaur gains indestructible until a turn. Oh, wow. That, that's only two mana, too. That's absolutely doable. I, I could definitely see that be, being put into a deck. Wicked Slumber. Four mana, Convoke. Tap up to two target creatures. Put a stun counter on either of them. Then put a stun counter on either of them. Oh. So you could split up the stun counters or uh, stack the stun counters on a single creature. Interesting. And here we have Squee the Immortal. <laughs> 2-1 for 3 when you may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. <laughs> Squee just won't go away. That's pre that's a pretty cool frame for him too. Okay, so now we're just going to open uh, packs 10 at a time. See what we get. Okay, so we got Pylon. 4 mana, Convoke, Destroy Target Creature or Planeswalker, and then Surveil 2. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Let's see, we got a, a mythic uh, wild card. That's good. Invasion of Tarkir, the Dragon Realm. When an Invasion of Tarkir enters the battlefield, reveal any number of dragon cards from your hand. When you do, Invasion of Tarkir deals X plus 2 damage to any other target, where X is the number of cards revealed this way. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, and that's any target, so you can smack someone in the face with that. Uh, am I reading that right? Build any number of dragon cards from your hand when you do. It deals X plus two damage to any other. Yeah. Yeah, so if you got like five dragons in your hand, that's that's seven damage to the face for only two mana. Uh, let's see. Defiant Thundermaw, 4-4 four, four, Flying Trample. Whenever a dragon you control attacks, it deals two damage to any target. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, th that's actually a pretty good mythic. <laughs> okay. Let's see. There's a Kin Spirit again. Ooh, Invasion of Alara is all five colors. This makes sense. It's Alara. Uh, so for all five colors, you, uh, you get a battle with seven counters on it. When Invasion of Alara enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile two non-land cards with mana value X or less. You may cast one of those two cards without paying this mana cost. Put one of them into your hand. Put the other cards exiled this way in the bottom of your library. Oh wow, that's, that's just value right there. And then we have Awaken the Maelstrom. Awaken the Maelstrom is all colors. Target player draws two cards. You may put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield. Create a token that's a copy of a permanent you control. Distribute three plus one plus one counters among one, two, or three creatures you control. Destroy target permanent and opponent control. It does everything. It is the Swiss army knife of invasions. Love it. Let's see. We have Glistening Dawn. Incubate X twice, where X is the number of lands you control. Oh, okay. That's actually really good. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. Let's see, I have Sram. Okay, that's an older card. That's an older card. Ozolith, the Shattered Spire. Two mana legendary artifact. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one plus one counter. Oh, that many plus one. Wait, that, that's weirded, weirded. If one or more plus one plus one counters will be put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one plus one plus one counters. I'll put on instead. Okay. That was weird, worded so weirdly, it was hard to read. And then two and tap, put a plus one plus one counter on target artifact or creature control, activate only as a sorcery. And it has cycling. Interesting. That's a cool card, I like that. And then you have, here is Warcrafting again. Okay, that's 10, we'll open another 10. Okay, so first up we have Rona, Herald of Invasion. Rona, one, three. See, whenever you cast a legendary spell, untap Rona, Herald of Invasion. Her tap ability is draw a card, then discard a card. And then fire five and a black Phyrexian mana. Transform Rona. Activate as a sorcery. She becomes a... Whoa. She becomes a 5-5 five, five trample. Whenever a source deals damage to Rona, to Larian Obliterator, that source's controller exiles a card from their hand at random. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield under your control. Otherwise, you may cast it without paying this mana cost. Oh my god. That's... That's pretty good. And it's at random, too. 
Ezra, uh, Archangel Elsmeth. So I think this is like a two of because I bought the, the uh, bundle. So four mana for four. Her plus one is create a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Two is plus and plus one counters on target creature and angel in addition to its other types and gains flying. And then minus six is return all non land permanent cards with menu value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. That could fit very well into my uh, into my Boros deck. Like, very well. Because like, I have a Boros deck that revolves around um, um, uh, resurrecting um, three or less uh, uh, CMC creatures. That, that can do pretty well. I like that. Okay. Over here we have Fairy Mastermind. It's a Fairy Rogue. Uh, interesting art on that one. Is there a two for two one flash flying? Whenever an opponent draws their second card each turn, you draw a card. And then three and a blue, each player draws a card. Oh wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay. Then we have Ancient Imperiosaur. For seven mana, you get a six six. It's got Convoke, Trample, Ward Two. Ancient Imperiosaur enters the battlefield with two plus and plus one counters on it for each creature that convoked it. Oh wow. Okay, he can come in big. Big baby. Okay, we have Into the Fire. This looks interesting. I like the art. For three mana, you get a sorcery, and it's choose one. Into the Fire deals two damage to each creature, planeswalker, and battle. Okay, that's pretty good. So it's a... It's a pyroclasm. Or, put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw the many cards plus one. Okay, so it's a, it's a pyroclasm that you can... Um, you can cycle if you if you need to. Let's see. There's another squee. We got hoarding broodlord. So this is a eight mana convoke dragon for seven six, flying. When hoarding broodlord enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, exile it face down, then shuffle. For as long as that card remains exiled, you may play it. Spells you cast from exile have convoke. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's interesting. Convoke. I wonder if, if can, the Convoke uh, style is going to be, be enough to uh, to play for a deck. Okay, next up we have Invasion of Gobicon. For two mana, when Invasion of Gobicon enters the battlefield, look at the target opponent's hand. You may exile a non-land card from it. For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may play it. This spell casts a spell cast this way costs two more to cast. Okay, so it's it's like that other um, other white card that um, exiles a card from your hand. It does the exact same thing as this. And then it becomes Light Shield Array. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that attacked this turn. Oh, that's pretty good. Sacrifice Light Shield Array. Creatures you control gain Hexproof and Indestructible until on a turn. So there there is a, a big like uh, plus one plus one counter push with this set. I like that. All right, next next set of packs. All right, let's see here. A whole bunch of wilds, I like it. Another invasion. We got a mythic wild. We got Niv Mizzet reborn. Grand grand art on that. Love it. Let's see, we got another Ren. Yeah, we got another Yorian. We got City on Fire. This is another Convoke spell. And the art looks like it's from New Capenna. So five and three red convoke. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage instead. Jesus Christ. All right. Big cost. Big risk, big, big reward, right? Okay, so we have Chrome Host Seed Shark. For three mana, you get a flying two four. Phyrexian Shark. A flying shark. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, incubate X, where X is that spell's mana value. Oh my. That's really good. You you can throw that in a control deck and just go to town. I like that a lot. Okay, another Nahiri's Warcrafting. Okay, here is a red and white card. Uh, Dejero and Hazaret. For two, two red and a white. Legendary creature, human god. So this is one of those team-up cards. As long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, Dejero and Hazaret have Vigilance and Haste. Whenever Dejero and Hazaret attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. You may exile a legendary creature card from among them. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. 
Until end of turn, you may cast the Exiled card without paying its mana cost. Okay, so it gives you um, very specific um, impulse draws and ha ha and potentially has Vigilance and Haste. So I would say probably if you're going to play this card, like this would be like the, the top end uh, card in your deck. Like, like you probably wouldn't be pay playing much else that uh, costs more than this. Because you want to be emptying your hand real fast to get that benefit. And here we have Brutaclad Telcor Engineer. Interesting. Never seen that card before. But that's one of the older cards, so we're going to skip that for now. Alright, last pack of 10. Okay, so we have a blue invasion to start us off. It is Invasion of Segovia. When Invasion of Segovia enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one blue Kraken creature tokens with Trample. That's pretty cool. Okay, and it's uh, 3 for 4. And then it becomes Cadus, Sea Tyrant of Segovia. Non-creature spells you cast have Convoke. At the beginning of your end step, untap up to four target creatures. Oh, wow. That's that's pretty decent, actually. For like the whole like Convoke style of deck. That's very interesting. Okay. Let's see. We've got another Archangel Elspeth. So I think the game really wants me to play Ar uh, Elspeth. So we got a Mythic Wild. We got an old card. We got... Blood Feather Phoenix, uh, two mana for a two two, Phoenix flying. It cannot block. Whenever an instant or sorcerer spell you control deals damage to an opponent or battle, you may pay one red. If you do, return Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Oh, that's pretty good. Honestly, I think that's better than like the the Phoenix check. It's like it's not as aggressive, but it it's it's pretty decent. Let's see, over here, okay, that's one of the older cards, that's Aurelia the War Leader. And that's, that's Lurus. Here we have Invasion of Call Time, here we go. <clears throat> Three and a red. When Invasion of Call Time enters the battlefield, exile all cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. Until the end of your next turn, you may play cards exiled this way. Oh wow! That's an interesting way to do impulse drawing. And then becomes Pyre of the World Tree. Wow. Discard a land card. Pyre of the World Tree deals 2 damage to any target. Whenever you discard a land card, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Oh, wow. That's really good. So you, you start pitching lands and start blowing people up and just get more cards off the top. Interesting. There's another Rona. Okay, here we have Grafted Butcher. That's a cool looking card. Phyrexian Samurai. For 1 and a black, it's a 2-2. Two, two. When Grafted Butcher enters the battlefield, Phyrexians you control gain menace until end of turn. Other Phyrexians you control get plus one plus one. So it's a Phyrexian Lord. It's about time. Then we have three and black. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Return Grafted Butcher from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. Pretty good. I like it. Okay. So all those packs are open. Now we're just down to the uh, Mythic packs. Or the Golden packs, I should say. So let's see what we have. Now, Golden Packs can hold, have cards that are not from the current set. So we keep that in mind. So we have uh, Zapondrel, the Hunger Dominus. That's from uh, 1. We have Boldaren Thrill Seeker. That's one of the new cards. Okay. So 2 in red. A 1-1. One, one. Backup 2. What does backup do? When this creature enters the battlefield, put 2 plus and plus 1 counters on target creature. If that's another creature, it also gains the abilities printed below this one until in a turn. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you, you use this. Let's say say you use it on that 2-2 that two, two knight that we saw earlier. So you use this, you back up 2 onto, onto the knight, it gets plus 2 plus 2, you draw a card because of the knight's ability. And then it also gets this ability, which is 1 and sacrifice this creature, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. Okay, that's dope. That That's really cool. I like that. That's a cool ability. You just pump something up big and then just throw it away to to close out the game. I can see that being very good. Okay. In invasion of Segovia, Headless Rider, and Invasion of Theros. Here we go. Two and a white. Battle, Siege. When Invasion of Theros enters the battlefield, search your library for an Aura, God, or Demigod card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay. So you go, in, go and get something useful. And it becomes... Ephara Ever Sheltering is a 4-4 legendary enchantment creature god. 
If Farah ever sheltering has lifelink and indestructible as long as you control at least three other enchantments. Whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your, battlefield under your control, draw a card. Okay, so I, I can see that that white green enchantment deck um, wanting to use this. Because you don't need to, uh, to have blue to cast this. It's, it just happens to be white and blue on the, on the back side. That's really cool. All right, what's the hidden card? Let the Risty Adversary. Nice. I did not have that yet. All right, next pack. Maniform Hellkite. Solkanar. Intrepid Adversary. Nice. Invasion of Gobakan. Suspicious Stowaway. And the hidden card is... Invasion of Chandelar. I haven't heard that name in a long time. Invasion of Chandelar is 3 and 2 green. When Invasion of Chandelar enters the battlefield, return up to three target permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. Wow, that's pretty cool. And then it turns into Leyline Surge. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty good. You know, let's say, like, you self-mill a bunch of stuff into to the graveyard. Um, and then get it all back with Invasion and just drop them in with this. And you play it on a turn that, like, you know you're going to be able to, like, bust it, like, that turn. That's pretty good. Okay, next pack. Okay, so here's a new one. We got Kogla and Yidaro. Ape, Dinosaur, Turtle. <laughs> That's a great type. Uh, two, two red, two green. When Kogla and Yidaro enters the battlefield, choose one. It gains Trample and Haste until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Uh, two, red, green. Discard Kogla and Yodaro. Destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. Shuffle Kogla and Yodaro into your library from your graveyard, then draw a card. Wow. That's really good. Yeah, I would honestly just be using it for, for its uh, its last ability. That's really good. Okay, uh, Invasion of Gobicon. We got Hullbreaker Horror and an Alchemy Hullbreaker Horror. Glissa, Herald of Predation. I don't think I saw this one yet. At the beginning of combat in your turn, choose one. Incubate two twice. Transform all incubator tokens you control. Or, Phyrexians you control gain first strike and death touch until on a turn. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's cool that we got like two different versions of Glissa, like back to back. Okay, so we got Squee. And our hidden card is... No Kaito Shizuki. Two more packs. Here we have Invasion of Theros, Glistening Dawn, what's this? Two and two, okay, yeah, that's the one we saw earlier. It incubates X twice for your lands. Invasion of Ixalan, Unnatural Growth, and Urte Resurrected. Hey, I actually needed that because like, I only had three of those. So nice. And then here in the hidden card is Elesh Norn, Mother of Machines. Nice. All right, here it is, the final pack. Let's see what we get. Tribute to the World Tree. Okay, we'll see what this is. So, for three green, enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card if its power is three or greater. Otherwise, put two plus and plus one counters on it. Interesting. So, if, if its power is three or greater, you draw a card. If it isn't, you make it three or greater. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Triple green is, is gonna be hard to pull off unless you're playing just straight green, though. But if you are, that, that's a really good card. Inga and Essica. Wow, look at that art. That is cool. So, two green and blue. Human God. 4-4. Four, four. Creatures you control have Vigilance and tap. Add one mana of any color. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if three or more mana from creatures was spent to cast it, draw a card. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that they're like doing like a rainbow road kind of situation there. That's pretty cool. Soulless Jailer, Hidetsugu, and Kairi. I didn't see this one yet. That's an interesting team up too. Two, two black, and, or two blue, and a black. Legendary Ogre Demon Dragon. Five, four. Flying. When Hidetsugu and Kairi enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Then put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Okay, so draw three cards, then put two cards back. When Hidetsugu and Kairi die, exile the top card of your library. Target opponent loses life equal to its mana value. If it's an instant or sorcery card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. Wow. That's really good. 
I think I might need to just like like play like a couple of these. When it comes in, you draw three and you put two cards back. When it dies, exile the top card of your library. Okay, okay, I see, I see. So you play it, you put cards back, you find a way to kill it yourself, <laughs> and then you you can just like play something off, off the top. Or you just let it live and just start beating face for five damage every turn. That's really cool. I like that. I might need to craft another couple of those. Okay, we also got Light Paws. And our final card is... Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. Not bad, not bad. Okay, cool. So, that was our, um, our pack opening for today. We got a lot of very interesting cards. Um, I'm definitely liking a lot of, like, the, uh, the blue and the black stuff, especially the, um, the, the shark and that, that dragon demon we just saw. That was pretty cool. So, uh, I'm gonna definitely be getting to work on building some new decks for this, uh, new season. So, until next time, uh, thanks for hanging out with me while we open all these packs. I'll see you next time.